So hello again. I'm um, in this video. I'm taking you down to my local woods with some fantastic bluebells. I'm going to share my experience with you, talk you through my camera settings, compositions, and if you can suffer my random ram, my random rambling, sorry, an insight into my thought process. By the end of the video, you will have picked up ideas to use in your own photography, and hopefully, with a bit of luck, the inspiration to go out and shoot some on your own. What I would like to do though is take this opportunity to thank my small band of subscribers for their support. If you've not subscribed yet, then please do use the watermark at the bottom of the screen now. And most importantly, don't forget to comment on this video and give it a thumbs either up or down. Now, bluebell photography is something that I've always sort of like struggled with. And um, it, it always seems that it doesn't matter what I do, I can never get that good clean composition that sort of really um, enables me to connect with the subject when I'm sort of sat in front of the computer screen and editing the images. I look at other people's pictures and other people's images of bluebells and I'm always fairly impressed with them. So it's a little bit of a shame really that for some reason I don't seem to be able to get the same sort of feel from my own work. Anyway, it's something that I need to capture and something that I need to sort of get on with and, and overcome. So um, let's go into the woods and uh, see how I get on. Depending how much I put in, that could be the um, longest introduction, a bit of B-roll I've, I've ever filmed. Okay, so um, a few weeks ago, I, I came up to this um, woodland. It's only about 15, 20 minutes walk away from my house, and I regularly walk the dog up through here. One of the beauties of having a situation like that is obviously I can, I, I can come up anytime I want, look around, come back in various conditions. So I've been coming backwards and forwards um, over the last few weeks and I think now the bluebells have just about got to the point at which they are, yeah, that they're ready to be photographed, really ready to be photographed. So I've come up this day, I've come up very early in the morning, it's a bit of an overcast day but it's some quite high clouds so I'm hoping that we get some quite sort of soft um, gentle light which is what I want to bring out the best in this sort of scene. Now I don't think it's going to be anything spectacular in terms of lighting so I'm going to have to sort of try and you know sort of when I eventually edit these photographs do them so they've got a very calming um, gentle feel to them. Now woodland photography isn't something I normally do and uh, to be honest it, it, it's actually very difficult because the trees, the foliage, you know, the, the, the bracken, the plants, everything around it on the ground and in, and in the sort of canopy as well can look quite messy and quite difficult. So I think the challenge for me today is, is, is going to be to come up with some compositions and things that I'm actually happy with. But um, as I said, you know, that this, this blog, um, video blog, whatever you want to call it that I'm doing, is really about warts and all. It's about a journey and, and sharing that with you guys. So I'm not afraid to do that. Um, I just hope that com what comes out of it is a few of you guys see it and think, you know what, I fancy going out and doing that myself. And if I, and if I achieve that today from it, then that's fantastic. So, um, <coughs> sorry, excuse me. Um, so I've, I've actually got up here first, sat down, um, made a cup of coffee, and, uh, I, and I'm just looking around. I'm just looking for things which might look like good compositions that might be things that sort of capture my eye, and, and, um, and that I want to include in my pictures. Obviously, bluebells, I don't want to cause any damage to, to anything for anybody, so I'm gonna work very much along the periphery um, of the woodland without trampling it and spoiling it for other photographers, because that would just be um, a, very, a, a dreadful thing to do. I can't stand people that do that. Um, so we'll do some wide angle lens work and we'll do some really long sort of like 300 mil lens work as well. So um, I'm going to drink this cup of coffee. I'm going to keep looking because I think I just need to sit here for a bit, listening to the birds, um, seeing the light levels rise, and just picking out possible compositions and things that I want to work with. I've already seen a few, um, but I won't really know if they're going to work until I, until I get the camera set up. So that's my next sort of uh, objective, to just, just um, yeah, just, just get, get the camera out and... Uh, and play with a few ideas. Now I'm a little bit limited for time, it's sort of like half past six in the morning now. I kind of want to get back home for about nine, like I said it's about 20 minutes walk so I've probably got a couple of, uh, a couple of hours just to play with these things and, uh, and, and see how it goes. So 
I don't want to rush it. I want to think about it. I want to be quite considered in my approach and uh, and come up with some really good things. So guys, I'll I'll get back to you when I've set up my first composition and I'm ready to show you what I'm what I'm shooting. Okay, so I've been taking um, pictures for a few minutes now. Um, as I said, I was going to have a bit of an exploration around. I've had a good walk around and had a look at um, what's available and what's available to shoot. And I've decided on this on this tree behind me. Um, I just like the way that it sort of leans into the frame. And it's a young, a young tree and it's bright and vibrant and fantastic colours and it's got this lovely soft sort of backdrop behind it. Well I hope it's going to be soft because what I've done is I've, I've, I've gone to my, my widest aperture on the lens um, that I can, so wide aperture, small number, so I've gone for f4 on my lens and um, that's hopefully just focusing on, manual focusing, um, focusing on, on the leaves and, and, and the branches itself from this small tree and just hoping that what will eventually will happen is that when I can process the image afterwards in, in, in Photoshop is I'll see that the um, background has gone out of focus so hopefully that's what we're going to get obviously to varying sort of like degrees. Um, what I've also done is, um, is I've obviously I've set the camera up using my cable release and just now, I won't show you how to do it on frame because I'm, I've, it's the first time I've actually used the feature. I used the auto white balance but I took it off and changed it so that I started using um, a custom white balance and I set that by shooting a piece of white paper under these conditions and I'm doing that because remembering back from the days when I was a film photographer um, getting bluebell colours correct was very very difficult um, you know you had different colour um, setups on the different film emotions that you were using and obviously you have less ability to sort of uh, modify the colour and everything so I thought I'll, I'll, I'll try setting up a custom white balance and see if that works. So um, first composition out of the way, um, hopefully you're going to get to see that image in a minute and then we'll go into shooting a few more. And in incidentally just a bit more information really about my setup, um, I'm using manual focus um, the camera's on the tripod, so the image stabiliser's turned off. Um, I'm, I'm shooting here quite, quite, wide, quite a wide angle, um, so I'm quite close to the subject, but obviously what I'm going to try to do now is, is move back a bit, use longer focal lengths, and see if we can get that background even more out of focus before we move on and do some other pictures. So you might see a, a, a couple of this come up on the screen, or maybe just the one, depending on, uh, depending on how it goes when I get home and do my editing. Okay guys, so everything that I just told you, forget it. Well, don't forget it all. Um, only forget the bit about the composition and, and where I was actually stood. Um, like I said, one of the great things about doing this sort of photography is that um, it, it's all about the exploration and getting comfortable in the landscape and exploring and, and, and looking and finding new compositions. So I sort of came over to this bank and stood up and realized that with the higher elevation, I could get more of the bluebells in and also I'm further away so I can, I can use a longer focal length and, uh, and, and use that to my advantage as well, which helps to throw the background even more out of focus. And I, and I actually prefer this composition and, and what I'm getting in it. The only thing I've got to decide on is whether I leave some of the trees to the left and to the right of it in or out. Other than that, everything's the same. So um, if we look at this again now on the back of the viewfinder, obviously you can't see it, but you'll see the final image. I'm just composing it as a square format picture. Um, I, I'm shooting at, uh, what am I shooting at? I'm shooting at a quarter of a second. Um, yeah. So there's uh, one second. Quarter, third of a second. Yeah, so a quarter of a second. Quarter, quarter, yeah, 25th. No, quarter, sorry. Quarter of a second. And, uh, and, and shooting at f4 as well to throw the background at focus. Now, I'm just going to zoom in and uh, what, what I do when I'm manual focusing in my landscape photography is I use the live view a lot. So I zoom right in and just focus on the back screen at 10 times magnification. There's five, there's 10. And then uh, you can just sort of get a really crisp sharp image. So there we go, there's my leaves that I want in focus, in focus. Zoom back out, compose the image. 
Great, there we go. Now I always bracket my images. I probably don't need to um, in this case, but we will just go, um, you know, two thirds under and, uh, and two thirds over as well. And that just sort of allows me to, to give it a good sort of, um, yeah, there we go. Just sort of make sure everything's exactly how I want it. Now I'm going to zoom in a little bit more because like I said, I couldn't really decide whether or not I wanted those, um, those trees in to the left and to the right. So I can change that a little bit. No, actually, I'm going to leave it as it is. I'm going to leave it. It's fine. It's fine. I think I might just move the camera around a little bit so we've got a little bit better um, composition that way. There we go. We'll just take that tree out right on the edge. So that just lets it lean into the frame a little bit more. We've only moved it fractionally, but you know what? There's, there's absolutely no reason why, after moving the camera, you wouldn't just recheck your focus. Be criminal not to. So same conditions again. F4. Third over. Spot on, third under, there we go, that's it, fantastic, so time to find some more compositions. Right, okay, so I've moved into my next um, next composition and I wanted to take some close-up pictures of the bluebells as well. So I've obviously wanted some sort of plain background to put them against and I found this lovely old tree um, with some lovely texture and everything in behind it and a clump of bluebells in front. And uh, by using a, a square um, format for the composition, I can have the trunks of almost going diagonally bottom left to top right and have the bluebells in there as well. Now I'm going to take a few standard pictures and um, by that I mean I'm, I'm just going to focus on the, on the pictures. I'm going to bracket aperture um, to see how the depth of field affects that as well. But I'm also going to use um, a, a, a technique known as focus stacking. Now I may or may not um, use these images. It depends how the other ones come out really. But focus stacking is generally used up used by close-up photographers quite a lot and people doing sort of like extreme macro but I find it's a real benefit to use it sometimes in um, landscape photography as well. Now I do need to declare um, as it's only right to do that I use um, software by a company called Helicon Focus. Now I am um, in a very small way supported by Helicon Focus in that they um, provided um, the software for me to use and um, obviously in return they, they, they get me their name mentioned in uh, in YouTube videos and they also get my get my support by um, taking it around to the um, uh, workshops that, that I do and I also introduce it in my lectures at sort of like local camera clubs and things so um, I, I'll put a link at the end um, or, or in the comments the description of um, about Helicon Focus and, and, and how to get hold of their software um, and, and maybe you'll see some finished articles later on as well so um, sorry articles I mean finished pictures later on but we'll, we'll just see how that goes <clears throat> so this part of it is the take without Helicon Focus so I've just come down to um, the woods at the moment, um, come down in the woods a little bit further and I found another composition that I can use. And um, I'm gonna have to move really quickly now because the lighting's just starting to pick up in the background behind me and uh, I don't want to miss it. So what I'm actually um, doing is um, focusing on these trees in the background. I'm just gonna get the exposure right again because things have all gone out of whack. 
since it's um, gone there. I'm also zooming right in, right in nice and close um, and making sure that the that the main subject's nice and sharp, which it appears to be. There we go, lovely. So we'll zoom back out on that one. I'm going to be shooting um, various bracketed exposures. So what I'm going to do, and, and when I say bracketing, I'm going to use the um, use the the, the uh, use the shutter speed really to do that. So we've got some quite strong lighting coming in here now. It's not really what I intended, but we'll see how it goes. So um, square format picture, diagonal composition. Um, everything's looking quite good in terms of the um, th of the terms of that. So, first picture, I'm going to shoot at um, f16. Lovely. I'm going to take my next one at f11. Next one's going to be at F eight. Lovely. Now the rest of them I'm going to shoot are going to be at F eight, but I'm going to use. Oh, actually, it's gone a little bit bright. It's gone a little bit bright. That light's coming up really fast. So let's just slow that shutter speed down a little bit more, just to get the highlights in. That's more like it. Spot on spot on so what we're going to do now is a little bit of um focus stacking and the way i'm going to do that i'm just i just know which way i'm going to wind the lens so i'm going to wind it back until the foreground's in focus there it is and i'm gradually just going to move it so what i do to do my first one i can't hand over the front to mark where the pictures are First one. Second. Third. Fourth. Fifth. Sixth. Seventh. Eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth, thirteenth, eighth, and there they are, they're just out of focus again. So, final picture. Photograph of the hand, just so I understand that um, obviously that's my last one. I'm not going to take any more. And then when I put the set together, I know exactly where they are. So we'll see if those images come out. And uh, if, if they do, great. If they don't, then, then yeah, not so great. But never mind. We've had a good morning. So let's switch that camera off for now. There we go. And... Uh, I'm going to grab hold of uh, you guys, switch you off for a minute and then uh, see what else I can find and take. Okay, so I did sort of say that I struggled with bluebell photography and I guess maybe woodland photography in general. The image I've just taken is a really good example of this and that's why I'm including it. Now that I've taken it and processed it, I feel no connection to the photograph. I can't say why exactly. It's a bit messy, feels unfinished, as if there was more to be done. At the same time, it seemed like a great idea but now I'm a little disappointed by the finished result. Maybe the lighting's too strong, the background too sharp, the foreground too messy. It's an opening shot and taken to get my, up my eye in. This is something I think that many photographers have to do, but often we don't share them and if you're struggling or new to photography, it can be a little discouraging to think that everyone else is nailing it every time. I'm going to come back to focus stacking in another video at some other point in the future, so subscribe now so you don't miss out. I wanted to share this with you. As I said, my videos are gonna be warts and alls, my good images, my bad images, 
why I think they're bad as well. So this is the final foot photograph that I took. I was feeling a little bit discouraged by the last photograph so I didn't do so much video when taking this, which is a shame because this is actually my favourite photograph of the day. Um, if you've got a favourite one, why don't you comment and let me know what it is in the comment below. So I desaturated the colours in this, in this when editing a little bit to give the photograph a more gentle sort of feel. Composing the dead tree stump on the top third of a square composition, the background and foreground nice state of focus allowing your eye to settle on the tree stump. I think with this photograph and picture of the tree I took at the beginning, I may have just beaten my woodland and bluebell photographic blog. Well, I've had an absolutely fantastic morning. Um, I'm hoping that I've got maybe. Um, two maybe three pictures that I'll come up with at the end that I like who knows maybe I'll even get more than that but until I get back and edit the images I'm just not going to know um, it's been really great to come out just for a few hours and and sort of do nothing other than you know not have to jump in the car and just walk a few minutes from home and come to a local location so if anything really comes out of this and this experience today for me it's just reinforced that you know look at what's on your doorstep and uh, you just never know what you're going to come up with and what you're going to be able to find um, you know what, what's right at your foot and, and, and to be honest you know you can get out in your garden and do this sort of thing as well you know, if you've got close-ups of, of um, landscapes, it, it, it's great. Just go into the intimate little details and uh, take some pictures of some of the flowers and things in, in your area. There's really nothing stopping anybody getting out and enjoying themselves with their camera, regardless of the weather, regardless of how far they can travel and, uh, and get out and go for it. So I'm going to um, walk back now, I believe. Um, hopefully there's gonna be some bacon sandwiches and everything ready for me. Um, it's, it's sort of got to about half past eight in the morning, so another half an hour home. Um, the family will be starting to get up and, uh, and, and start the day. And that's the other good thing about sort of early morning landscape photography. I've been out, I've done something I've enjoyed to do, and, uh, I, and now I'm at everybody else's disposal for the rest of the day, really. So, um, so that I'm not late and, uh, and uh, get back in time before the bacon's gone, I'll um, see you later. Thank you. Well, I thoroughly enjoyed my couple of hours in the woods and time taking and editing these images and making this video. I honestly didn't know when I went out if the video would ever get to be shown. But as I said, I tend to struggle with my um, bluebell and woodland photography. But the two final images I produced worked out very well. So I hope you all enjoyed the video. I hope it sort of gives you some different ideas as well. So help me out and subscribe. Don't forget the bell icon. Give a thumbs up, thumbs down. Please comment below. Most of all, enjoy your photography, stay safe, and I'm going to see you next time.